Welcome everyone to our online presentation of Guardian Scholars Program at the University of California Merced. Welcome. I would like to give you a couple of tips for participating in our presentation. If you would like to join us for the question and answer panel, you can do so by just selecting that Q&A button and you will enter your question and click submit. We will get those questions and try to answer them throughout the presentation. However, we will also have a live question and answer session at the end, so make sure you are sending in those questions throughout. If you would like to adjust your audio settings, you can do so in the lower left corner. You'll click the option there, make some adjustments as you see fit, and you'll be all set with your audio. If you would like to raise your hand throughout the presentation, you can do so with the raise your hand button at the bottom of your screen. Once you're ready to lower your hand, you can do that again simply by selecting the button again. Also, one last option, in the upper portion of your screen, you should see view options. If you select that, you would be able to adjust your screen size if you'd like full screen or if you'd like it somewhat smaller than that for your preference. My quick introduction is that my name is Ricky Hill and I am the e-recruiter at the University of California Merced. I will also be the moderator behind the scenes for this presentation. At this time, I would like to hand it over to our expert presenter, Edith. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Edith Ramirez and I am the program coordinator for Guardian Scholars at UC Merced. Um, we also have a student that is with us today. I think we're having a little trouble with her camera, but I will let her um, introduce herself through audio right now. Hello, my name is Alyssa Garcia. I am a third year psychology major. Oh, it works now. I'm a third year psychology major. Um, I work for the Guardian Scholars Program as student coordinator. Thank you, Alyssa. So um, I'm going to give a presentation that will go over the, an overview of the services and benefits that the program provides. Um, through each slide, after I talk a little bit about the service, Alyssa will provide uh, the student perspective um, as a student in the program and or um, some of the work that she does as, the program, as a student coordinator for Guardian Scholars. So be, before we go into the services that the program provides, I do want to read off um, our mission, which is to pro provide a sustainable network of academic and personal support services that promote degree attainment at UC Merced for youth that have experienced the foster care system and our homelessness. We strive to create a welcoming and inclusive space through programming and services designed to help scholars build community, identify their strengths, and utilize their resources. Next slide, Ricky. Also, I'd like to talk a little bit about the program history. So Guardian Scholars actually started in 1998 at CSU Fullerton. Um, CSU Fullerton was the first university to ever have a program that served um, youth that have experienced the foster care system. But after that, um, a, there are a variety of programs that started statewide. Um, the names in, on some college campuses do vary um, as do the um, different services and benefits that the program provides because they tend to be completely grant and donation funded. So the services that the programs provide um, do vary depending on the funding. Next slide. Okay, so now I'll begin going over the program services at UC Merced. Next slide. The, one of the first things that we provide to all, all our incoming students is a program orientation, which typically happens a week before um, classes begin. That orientation covers all the programs and, and services offered by the program. So typically, we, you, students will essentially get the same presentation that you all, you all are getting today. Um, the orientation also provides an opportunity for scholars um, to meet each other and to meet the program staff and the student coordinators. Students also receive move-in packages during orientation, or at least a portion of their move-in packages. Um, also, students will um, receive a portion of their move-in packages when they move in into their dorms. Um, typically, what that includes is bedding um, and pillows, as well as a quilt, which are donated by the University Friend Circle. Alyssa, do you want to get this, the student perspective? Yeah, so when I was a freshman and I got to receive the move-in package myself, it was very helpful because I didn't have like a lot of money to go buy some of the things that were provided there for me. So it was awesome to have 
you know, that thing that like a lot of that stuff already given to me as I came in. What were some of the items that were included in the move-in packages? Do you remember? Yeah, so I got a pillow. I uh, got some sheets. Um, I also got a bed cover. I got snacks. I got lots of things for laundry as well. A bag. So I had lots of things that I used for uh, like even that I still have now for my third going on my fourth year of college. Thank you. Next slide. Our scholars also receive priority registration. So essentially what that means is that all guardian scholars are able to register for classes ahead of the general population. Um, I think this is the benefit that our scholars enjoy the most um, because that means that they are able to, they have full flexibility over their schedule. Um, so if there are students that, we have some students that are full-time, um, they're full-time students that are also working um, and being able to provide, get priority registration allows them to you know, not have to worry about um, their schedules. Yeah, adding on to what Adit is saying, we have a lot of students that have lots of things that they are worried about. And this is, this is one of the be like benefits of being in the program because you don't have to worry about that. It's very stressful time, especially during regular registration for students at UC Merced already. It's already hard enough to get classes. So having this priority registration really gives um, students a little ease at mind when they finally get their classes and are not fighting or classifying things. Next slide. Housing. Um, so Guardian, the Guardian Scholars Program works really closely with housing on campus to ensure that our scholars have a place to stay during gap periods. Um, and what we mean by gap periods is when the winter break, spring break, and summer break. Um, we work again closely with housing just to ensure that the scholars that are currently living on campus and may be in need of housing during those gap periods are able to stay in housing during those times. Um, typically that happens um, with a, a, like a fee waiver. Um, it does vary semester by semester, but that is something that we, um, you know, work really closely with housing. Yeah, I also, um have used this resource myself. There was one summer I had just began working and Adis, I needed to reach out to her because I did need, a student needed housing and they needed to be here over the summer, but they did not get, like were able to fill out the form in time, but we were still able to provide them with housing and make sure that they had a meal plan and all that stuff. So even though like it was cut with time, we were able to help that student get that resource and make sure they had housing all summer. I think when it comes to housing, what is particularly important is that scholars that are in the program communicate um, their housing needs to either myself or one of the student coordinators. Um, so if you ever, any of you, like if you ever, any of you become guardian scholars, um, just make sure that you communicate that to any of us. Next slide. Textbook assistance. So the Guardian Scholars Program has a free lending library, which is available to all Guardian Scholars. Um, there is a list of all the books that we have uh, on our CAT courses, which um, scholars will receive um, access to once they join the program. We also have a limited amount of book stipends that are available. The amount of that stipend does vary semester by semester because it varies on the amount of funding that we have but that is also something that um, our scholars are eligible for. Yeah, and so most of the books are pretty updated because um, my the other student coordinators and I have also like donated our books to the lending library. So there are books that, um, that we use now like that are very recent and stuff. So it's gonna be really helpful. And if not, then we have like resources that we can give you and stuff like that. The Guardian Scholars Program also offers um, a variety of workshops on different topics. Um, so we do workshops on academic and life skill workshops. We've done things on like career and professional development, imposter syndrome, prepping for grad school. We also do some self-care um, workshops. So the topics do vary semester by semester, but we try to listen to what our scholars' needs are and provide workshops that um, will fulfill their needs. Yeah, and in the workshops, they're kind of informative, but they also really, really help 
So like the one that, for example, that's not on here is like the resume workshop. And a lot of our first year students really enjoyed that. that like they were, they were not really aware of like there were different types of resumes. And we went over like lots of examples. We printed out examples. We had a box folder that they can locate anything that they need. Like if anything that we didn't go over, like we were able to like give them that resource. So like with these workshops, we wanna make sure that we give you um, like the maximum amount of resources out of it. We want you to gain stuff out of it, not just another class. So in addition to the workshops that we offer, we also offer socials um, every month. The, the, the socials are completely student led. So all the student coordinators um, come together and they meet and they typically come up with the theme for the different social. Um, and the socials provide an opportunity for scholars to connect with each other, um, de-stress, typically have games and activities, there's free food, there's music. Um, so again, they're just meant for scholars to like have a good time and um, build community together. And we've gotten a lot of feedback from our socials saying that they've actually like have made friends, they've actually enjoyed coming, like not just because there's free food, but also an opportunity to um, get to know us and get, get to gain our little CSP into like more of a stronger community by de-stressing and code social. We also offer academic and life skills um, mentoring. So all our guardian scholars receive one-on-one -on -one mentoring to help ensure both personal and academic success. And those are through um, meetings with the program coordinator. So meetings with myself, all our scholars are required to meet with me twice per semester. Um, so they're all, even though they're only required to meet with me twice per semester, um, I do have a, an open door policy. So I will see students more than that if they feel the need to. Um, and in addition to the, the next slide, um, also talks about um, the peer to peer, which are office hours that the students hold to also provide uh, an opportunity for scholars to connect with them and to speak about an academic or personally related topics with them. And our scho all guardian scholars are also required to meet with the student coordinator at least twice per semester. Yeah, and during these student coordinator meetings, they're more of getting to build that relationship with um, the mentee and us as student coordinators being the mentors to them and seeing things from a different perspective, not just from um, a deep perspective as a program coordinator, but if they need help from student to student, this is where we actually help them, help them academically and personally with the issue. Guardian Scholars staff will also work really closely with key departments. So I know that I've already talked about a little bit about housing and how we work closely with them, but we also work closely with other um, departments on campus, um, particularly financial aid um, and or like health promotion, CalFresh um, and basic needs to ensure that our students' needs are met with minimal, minimal difficulty. So typically I'll, I'll provide the example of financial aid. Um, because I think it's something that comes up more often with our scholars, but um, being able to be part of the program ensures a lot of the time that our scholars don't have to continuously repeat their stories or repeat, um, you know, the specific situations that they may be in. Um, instead, it allows for like the program coordinator to have that communication with um, someone from financial aid. And we usually have like a person in each department that we can refer our scholars to, to make communication easier and to make it easier on the student as well. Alyssa, would you like to add anything to that? Um, uh, just with going off what you said, I think it's um, like everyone in like the center that we work at and the Park Success Center knows like that we have work with certain populations. So, I think it's easier when students know like they're part of this program because they are, they are easy accessible to other resources because they are guardian scholars. So I think like not being afraid of like representing like the program and stuff, it's easier to be accessible to more resources. Thank you. Next slide. Guardian Scholars Program also offers scholarship and emergency financial assistance. Um, so Guardian Scholars um, do have an opportunity to receive some scholarship um, money. Um, there is no application per se right now, although we are considering um, having an application for scholars to submit. And the amount of funding that, or the amount of money for that scholarship also does depend on the amount of money that um, 
has been don't noted, donated to that particular fund, um, but it is an opportunity for our scholars. Our scholars are also eligible for emergency financial assistance. Um, so typically, the, I, I guess the example that I like to provide, for instance, say you're a scholar that wears you know, prescription glasses and your glasses break um, and you don't have the funds to pay for them. We would consider that an emergency, so the program would be able to provide you with funds to be able to pay for that, and that is money that you wouldn't have to pay back to, um, to the program. Um, another example is we do also provide like emergency gift cards for grocery store, particularly during gap periods for our scholars. So say that you stay in housing and on campus housing for winter and you are in need of like, you know, funds to pay for groceries, the program will be able to provide you with an emergency gift card to be able to purchase those groceries. And all you have to do on your end is um, be, bring back the receipt. Um, for the groceries that you purchase for that time. This, all those, all the, these funds do vary case by case. So you're not guaranteed just because you're in the program that you will be able to receive the emergency funds. Um, so it is just something that you, you need to communicate with myself. Um, and then I'll work with you to see if you're eligible for those emergency funds. The Explore California trip. So our Guardian Scholars receive an opportunity to explore an, an, um, an area in California each um, academic year. Last year we went to Monterey Bay in um, March. Um, so the program was able to take a few scholars um, and paid for um, transportation, for food, admission into the Monterey Bay Aquarium, as well as a tour of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Unfortunately, this year, um, we weren't able to take our trip because of everything that is happening with COVID-19, um, but we are postponing it into fall. Um, and this trip just provides an opportunity again for scholars to come together, de-stress, and get an opportunity to maybe go somewhere that they otherwise maybe wouldn't be able to go or visit. Yeah, and our Explore California trip was really really fun like I enjoyed it myself and I know lots of scholars said they really enjoyed it because it's a different experience when you get to go like as a group with this group that you've been going to like part of this program the people have been helping you and you actually get like to be outside of school and having that um, connection with students is, is awesome. GSP banquet so the Guardian Scholars program celebrates our graduating scholars every year through our annual G GSP banquet um, it's usually open to all Guardian Scholars, um, as, and then the graduating scholars are able to bring a few um, friends with them to the event. Um, this event also is one of those that we will not be able to hold in person this year, but we are thinking of other ways to celebrate our Guardian Scholars um, virtually. But it also is another fine time to provide scholars with an opportunity to connect, um, celebrate their accomplishments, we have our own um, Guardian Scholars stools, so all our graduating scholars receive the stools um, during that time. And they also receive certificates from the Guardian Scholars program for their like, various accomplishments. Yeah, I think it's a good, it's a good um, thing that we do this because the, yes, they are graduating from UC Merced and that's awesome, but being part of the Guardian Scholars program, um, which has led them to this point is pretty, um, amazing to celebrate them in such a small space because at graduation they are being called like hundreds of names and stuff but it's nice to get a special recognition and I think that's what they deserve like during this time um, and they get to receive a nice GSP school. Guardian Scholar swag. So our scholars are eligible to receive a variety of Guardian Scholar swag. Um, I already talked about a little bit about the graduation stoles. We also have some folders, laundry bags, pens. Actually, it was also Alyssa's idea to get um, pop sockets. So that's something new that we have recently. Um, so the type of swag we have does vary um, semester by semester, but it is also something that our scholars are eligible to receive. <clears throat> So we also have um, a few different like annual events um, that are sometimes not necessarily just for the scholars in our programs, but also for the community. And one of those is Foster Youth Awareness Month. Um, this is actually going to be our second um, time celebrating Foster Youth Awareness Month. Um, and we've been, last year we did a little bit differently, but I did wanna share with you the opportunity, this opportunity with you um, 
we are currently taking art submissions for scholars that have experienced the foster care system that like to submit an art or piece of work that they feel um, describes their experience um, having been in the foster care system. Uh, scholars will have an opportunity to either, if they choose to submit it, to be anonymous and or to provide their name and hopefully also like a little description, depending on what the piece of art is, of what that piece of art means to them. And all submissions will be displayed on a website that will become live on May 1st and will be open all of May in celebration of Foster Youth Awareness Month. All submissions are due on April 24th and the hyperlink is provided right here. So if any of you are interested, um, also feel free to either email the Guardian Scholars account, which you will be able to see at the very end of the presentation, or myself, um, and my email will also be provided at the end of the presentation. And by forms of art, we mean like not just like painting or drawing, but it can be in any way of expression, whether you want to write a poem, a song, um, anything in that form um, will be okay. Like I said, if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out to one of us. Our information will be at the end. Next slide. Another one of our annual events is a summer youth retreat. Um, typically, this is a one day event. It is an um, opportunity for ninth, so high school students, ninth to 12th graders um, to come and visit campus. We do a variety of like workshops. Um, there's typically a resource fair, there's fun activities, um, food. Um, we have a really great like group of like volunteers that like are, you know, work with the, the youth that are there for that day. Um, fortunately, we also will not be able to hold this in person, um, but the event, we are still con uh, planning to do something. Um, the event will be held remotely and actually will, I think be, we're still working out the details, um, but I believe it will be like a three day, a three week, sorry. Um, we'll be, we will be providing two workshops um, for three weeks on a variety of topics. Um, there will be incentives that will be provided and the dates and incentives will be announced soon. So if anybody is interested in being part of the summer youth retreat, um, also feel free to reach out to us um, via email. Next slide. Oh, go ahead, Alyssa. Oh, no. I was just going to say that too. Okay. And, and then the last thing that I wanted to share is that there is also a Guardian Scholars Club on campus. Um, this is a club that is like separate from the program, but it did, um, it did stem out of scholars that were in the program that were interested in creating, creating awareness around the foster youth experience um, and doing work with local organizations to help support foster youth. Um, it is a club that is completely student run and it's open to all UC Merced students. Um, so you do not have to be part of the program to be part of the club. And their goal is to help increase the number of foster youth in higher education. Alyssa is actually the president of the club, so I'll let her share a little bit more about that. Yeah, so unfortunately this semester we wanted to start up and stuff, but because of what is going on with this, and we, have, we can't be on campus, um, we are transitioning to try, trying to do things online and like working remotely. So hopefully next semester will be on campus and you don't have to be part of the program, but if you are part of the program and you want to be part of the club, that's totally fine. Um, we do like lots of volunteer with foster youth in Merced County. Um, we have done tie-dye with a couple of students at um, one of the foster youth agencies and we were able to bring club members um, there. And then like once they got like all their verifications and things that they needed, we were able to go to the agency and actually volunteer for a couple of hours and meet youth. So it's a good mentor um, if you're interested in like mentoring students or youth. This would probably be a good opportunity for you and to get um, like out there and we're and like see other things, other resources that we also do. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, so now that we've talked about the different benefits and services that the program provides um, for scholars that are in the program, I also wanted to talk a little bit about eligibility and requirements. Next slide. 
So to be eligible for the Guardian Scholars Program, um, students must be a UC Merced student or have submitted their SIR. Students also must meet at least one of the following requirements. Reside in the foster in foster care or guardianship by their 18th birthday. Um, two, receive AB 12 funding. Be eligible for a Chafee grant. Eligible for independent living um, program services or experience homelessness. Um, I, I do want to point out again that you only have to be meet um, one of the following requirements. So you do not have to meet all of them. You just have to be um, identify with one of those um, items listed there. Um, also, a popular question that I often get asked um, in terms of like residing in the foster care system or guardianship. Um, I often get asked if it matters how long they were in the foster care system or under guardianship or what their age was. Um, for our program, it doesn't. So um, regardless of how old you were um, when you were in the foster care system or under guardianship, you would be eligible for the program. And also regardless of how long you were in either of those as well. I have a question from someone. They're asking, do you provide any assistance or outreach to prospective foster youth applicants interested in applying to UC Merced? For example, meeting with foster youth who are still in high school and providing information and support to apply to UC. I know UC Merced does offer this in prospective applicants in general, but I'm wondering if there is anything more specifically geared to foster youth aside from the retreat. So that's a good question. We, we do, um, typically when it's in person, um, if you want to, if if you would want to bring a group of students um, to campus to receive a tour, typically through the tour center, they can reach out to us. You can ask for a specific like panel of guardian scholars, um, and we can set up the panel with guardian scholars, and we can talk about our program and kind of like go over the, an overview of what the program does, similar to what we're doing here today. Um, now that we obviously can't do that in person right now, we do have um, the scholars, like I mentioned, have student coordinator hours, and we're actually working, currently working on this right now, on setting um, times that they will be available to meet with um, student, incoming students. Um, so two of our student coordinators are in charge of outreach during summer, and they will be, we'll be sending out this information soon, so if you have questions, you can email me, um, but, um, they will they will host um, hours to answer any questions that any incoming students may have. And they can also always reach out to me via email as well. In addition to that, we also have social media accounts, which we'll provide the information for at the end of the presentation. And that's also a really great way for scholars to know, you know about deadlines um, and know about what the Guardian Scholars Program is doing in general. Adit, there's also another question. They said, is proof required for these requirements? Yes. I'm actually going to go over that in the next slide. Okay. Next. Okay. So documentation. This is the, so in order to be, to essentially apply for the program, um, each of our scholars has to provide the following three documents. The first one is a personal statement that talks about how your lived experience has shaped your outlook for higher educational goals. It should be two pages long, double spaced, um, and just ensure that your name and your ID are provided at the, at the top of the paper. Scholars also need to submit a letter of recommendation. So letters should address your ability to benefit from joining Guardian Scholars, and it, it can come from any one of your choosing, as long as they can speak to how they feel or why they believe that you would benefit from being part of the Guardian Scholars program. For verification, it can come in two different ways. So one, you can submit your completed Chafee grant eligibility form, or two, you can also submit a letter from either your social worker, independent living skills program coordinator, or essentially anyone that can verify that you um, either have experienced the foster care system or your homeless status at any point. The only thing that I, um, would like to, I guess, emphasize is that the letter of recommendation and the verification letter should not come from the same person. 
Okay, so now that we've talked about eligibility requirement, um, yeah, requirements and the documentation that you need to submit, I also briefly want to go over um, the requirements or the expectations that um, we have of the scholars in the program. So all Guardian Scholars must participate in the Guardian Scholars orientation that we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Um, if for some reason scholars can't um, make it physically to the uh, Guardian Scholars orientation, then they will be required to meet with myself an additional time so that I can cover um, the, all the programs, benefits, and services. And they will also be able to, or sorry, will be required to meet with the student coordinator an additional time just so that they can answer any questions that they may have after their meeting with me. Uh, scholars are also expected to maintain satisfactory academic progress. They should meet with the program coordinator and a student coordinator again twice per semester. Second slide, our next slide. Also, first and second years must meet with their academic advisor once per semester. Uh, transfer students uh, will meet with the academic advisor during their first year as well. Additionally, all Guardian Scholars must attend one Guardian Scholar social event. So as we mentioned earlier on, we do provide a social once per month, so typically three for, per um, semester. Um, if for some reason scholars can't make it to the specific um, you know, socials because of the conflicts between the date and the times, um, scholars should communicate that with me and we will be able to come up with an alternative for them. Scholars also should attend at least one Guardian Scholars workshop and then one UC Merced hosted workshops. The university offers a variety of workshops on a variety of different topics um, throughout the whole um, academic year. So our, our scholars are required to attend at least one of those. And then they have specific do documentation that they need to provide to verify that. And that's something that we can go over um, when scholars join, officially join the program. We also have um, GSP study sessions that we actually started this academic year. So all our new students, all incoming students need to, regardless of whether you're a transfer student or a first year student, must attend at least four hours um, per month. The first two hours need to happen before, between the first two weeks of the month and the last two hours happen within the last two weeks of the month. And then all our continuing students must attend at least two hours of study sessions per month. And like, even if students um, already like fulfilled their uh, hours and they still like would like that space to come study and stuff they can still come like whenever they'd like because we also have uh scantrons and snacks also at the study session so if the students are in need or like they have another exam like in an hour but they forgot their scantron they can just drop by in the study session and get that Okay, so here is our contact information. Again, my name is Edith Ramirez and I'm the program coordinator for Guardian Scholars. Um, my email is right here. So I know in some of the questions and answers, I did ask um, some of you to email me for your specific questions because a lot of the questions that you're asking does depend on um, individual specific situations. Um, so please feel free to email me and we could, um, and I can answer your questions there. Also, if you have any like additional questions, um, you can email the Guardian Scholars email. Typically, the student coordinators are the ones that oversee that one, and they can answer your questions through there. Um, and sometimes, depending on the question, they will also um, forward the question to me, and then I will be in contact with you, depending on what your question is. Our office is located in the Bright Success Center, which is in the Collegian Library 22Q as well. So. And then here is the information um, for the or the names of all of our student coordinators. Again, they are typically they are responsible for the Guardian Scholars account. So if you email that um, email, you will typically get a response from one of them. And then I know we kind of talked about a little bit about outreach. Holly and Leonard will be the the student student coordinators that will be reaching out to scholars that are eligible for the program throughout summer. So if you are one of those scholars, look out for emails from either of them um, because they will be the ones that are hosting those meetings um, to answer any, any of the questions that you may have. And then here is our website information as well as all our social media. Again, so our social media accounts are a really good way for you to find out um, what like the different deadlines and different events and things that the Guardian Scholars Program is, is hosting. So please, follow us on social media.
yeah, social media is where we're most active, especially on Instagram and Facebook. Um, Instagram is re really accessible, so like we're posting like at least weekly on that. Even if it's it's mainly stuff pertaining to the Guardian Scholars Program, but if you have specific questions, we can also get back to you um, pretty quickly through that platform as well. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for like listening to our presentation and joining us to learn more about the Guardian Scholars Program today. Again, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Ricky again, your e-recruiter at the University of California Merced, as well as the moderator behind the scenes during this online event. Thank you so much to our panelists, Edith and Alyssa. And thank you so much for the Guardian Scholars Program and everything that you all offer to our students who are eligible. So what I'd like to offer to our audience right now is the web address for where they can find the recording for this event, as well as other upcoming online webinars that we do offer. That website is admitted.ucmerced.edu slash webinars. Again, it's admitted.ucmerced.edu slash webinars. A couple that we do have coming up uh, includes one that would be about student life and the different opportunities and experiences that we have to offer at UC Merced. We also have one coming up on tomorrow, which is Friday, and that would be the focus of the Black student success and organizations that we offer on campus for that population. We also have uh, a few coming up that are specific for parents and families in support of their students. And one of those will specifically be in English and the other will be exclusively in Spanish. So that would be a good one if you have Spanish speaking family members, that would be a nice one for them to attend. Once again, a big thank you to everyone in attendance during this online event. Our website again is admitted.ucmerced.edu slash webinars. Big thank you to Edith and Alyssa for this Guardian Scholars Program presentation. And on behalf of the University of California Merced and my colleagues, thank you so much for joining. Have a wonderful afternoon.